Hello Huachong students, in this video I'll be showing you how uh, the, the main policy that Singapore uses in order to uh, solve cyclical unemployment. Okay, the first thing uh, again to note is uh, how does the how does cyclical unemployment occurs in Singapore? Let me use the ADAS curve to illustrate the scenario. Okay, so again the y-axis is general price level the x-axis is real national income you draw your AS curve okay, and the AD curve so let's say this is the original Singapore scenario this AS AD curve refers to Singapore okay so let's look at what happened in the year 2009 what happened during the subprime is that US went into a recession okay so as US went into a recession their income level fall and when the income level fall, the demand for our exports will also fall. So as our exports fall, the AD curve shifts to the left. Okay, shifts to the left. So you can see we we started from YE1 and now we are at YE2. Okay, where the YF is here. Okay, as you can see, the gap between between our equilibrium income and our full employment income has gone up okay so this shows an increase in cyclical unemployment okay so one obvious policy is of course to push the AD curve back okay, let me call this AD1 to AD2 okay so one obvious policy is to use an expansionary demand management policy to push the AD2 curve back to 81 but we all know that in uh, Singapore demand management policies do not work as well why is that the case first the X minus M is such a huge component of our AD curve that any attempt by our Singapore government to in increase G to increase C will have very little impact on our AD curve the second reason is that our multiplier is very small so when our multiplier is very small, again, the use of a demand management policy will not be so effective to push the AD curve back. So we cannot use demand management policy. So what kind of policy can we use to help to minimize some of the cyclical unemployment? The policy that we mainly use here is our supply side policy, specifically the wage policy. Now, there are three types of wage policy you can think about. Number one is our flexible wage scheme. Okay, that's the first wage policy. The second is a cut in the employer's CPF contribution. And of course, the final policy that came out in the year 2009 was the job credit scheme. Okay. As we all learn, right, the AS curve, especially the short-run AS curve, takes into account the aggregate cost of production. So when you have a flexible wage scheme, it's pretty clear-cut. clear, clear cut. You allow the firm to cut the wages of the workers they hire. When that happens, okay, the aggregate cost of production that the firm faces would fall. This will lead to the fall in our AS curve from, okay, let me, let me call this SRAS1 it will fall to SRAS2 look what has happened by the shift down of the SRAS curve there's a movement along the AD2 so that now we are moving from YE2 to let me call this YE3 what has the flexible wage scheme does it has reduced our cost of production and look the gap between YF and YE has now become smaller so what we are doing here is that we are actually offsetting some of the increased cyclical unemployment that is brought about by the fall in our net exports. When the, okay, let's now explain how our CPF policy works in Singapore. Let me use a new piece of paper. Now, let's say for example when you find work in uh, Singapore, your monthly wage is 2000 Okay, so this slide is to explain to you how our CPF works. Now, when you are paid 2000 as your gross wage, okay, you have to contribute to your CPF account. 
that is known as the employee CPF contribution. So let me just assume that the employee's contribution is 20%. Okay. Now, with this 20%, it, it means that you have to contribute 20% of 2,000. Okay, that would be 400. 400 will go into your CPF account, which gives you 1,600 as your take-home wage. The thing you've got to know about our CPF system is that there's also an employer's contribution. Okay, the, the firm that hires you will have to also contribute to your CPF account. So for simplicity, let's keep it to the same percentage, 20%. So this means that other than the 400 that goes in your CPF account, the firm will pay another 400 okay, in, to be deposited into your CPF account. Okay, so from this perspective, the firm's cost of hiring you is not just 2,000. Okay, it's not just this gross wage. It's actually 2,000 plus his employer's contribution. So it's 2,400. Okay, so in during uh, 2002, okay, during uh, sub September 11, we actually cut the employer CPF contribution. Okay, so you can see how policy two works here. Okay, by uh, allowing this employer's contribution to be cut, okay, let's see, let me cut it to 10%. Okay, now, instead of having to contribute 400 to your CPF, the firm only need to contribute 200. So his, his wage cost now under the new employer's CPF contribution is 2,200. So from his perspective, the, from the firm's perspective, the cost of hiring you has just gone down. So if you go back to the O, o note, okay. So as the cost of hiring you goes down, this will also shift the SRAS one to SRAS two, thereby achieving the same uh, fall in the cyclical unemployment. Now, job credit scheme works in a similar way, okay. With with job credit scheme, okay. Let me switch back to the O note. Okay, firstly. Un under policy 2, you can see that when, when there's a cut in the employer CPF contribution, okay, the, your CPF account actually uh, does, does not go up as uh, much when the, CPF, when the employer CPF contribution is cut. Now, the job credit scheme is a bit uh, different here in the sense that the em employer still gives you 20%. Okay, so it will still give 400 to your CPF account. But the employer can then claim a bit of this uh, CPF contribution from the government. Okay, so su suppose the job credit scheme allows the firm to claim, uh, let's say, half of the employer's CPF contribution. What this does is that after paying 400 into your CPF account, the job credit scheme allows the firm to claim back 200 or half of that 400 from the government. So from the firm's perspective, his cost of hiring you is now also 2,200, but you benefit by having uh, the same CPF amount every month into your CPF account. So you can see that both of these policy works based basically by lowering the aggregate cost of production. Okay, so all these three schemes work by cutting the cost of production by, to the firm by shifting SRAS1 to SRAS2 and this will cause uh, so-called, this will cause the rise in the cyclical unemployment to be much less. But as you can see, right, no wage scheme can actually totally restore back the original contribution. So we have to wait for the US to recover before the 82 can finally shift back to 81. Okay, but this is what we do in the meantime to minimize the cyclical unemployment.